Hello and thank you for being here today. My name is Jack Albrecht and today we're going to discuss how has the advancement of workplace technology led to a gap of knowledge between younger and older employees and what is the effect this has within the communication, within, with the communication between colleagues. Starting off, we're going to look at the technologies within the workplace. As you can see, it is most commonly used items are listed here. Between cell phones, desk phones, laptops and monitors, and headsets, printers, and copiers, these are all extremely popular to have within your workplace to enhance your productivity. Some of the applications that are extremely popular within the workplace as well are Skype, Google Drive, and Microsoft Office. Skype being an instant messaging platform that allows you to do voice calls and video calls as well, and Google Drive and Microsoft Office that allows you to use applications within it. For example, Microsoft Office has Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Outlook being an emailing platform for communication. So now, to have those applications available, you must have internet. And as you can see, this is the expected growth of internet within the next 10 years, provided by Forbes. Starting in 2015, with roughly 15 billion hubs used for internet service, there's expected to be 75 billion in 2025. Along with looking at the future of internet and how widely it can be used, we look at the past and see how much growth has occurred within the last 30 years. This being in 1990 and this being 3.5 billion in 2016, an astronomical number. So now we're going to look at, at how to understand this age gap and what it truly is. It was really originally discovered and talked about in a 2012 study by the University of Lisbon in which they just used a couple men uh, that were over the age of 64 and working. Within this study, they found that 72% of these men did use a mobile device, but only 13% used a computer and 10% used the internet. After seeing these staggering results, they decided to dive deeper in the study and uh, have a, more, a higher survey with not only men, but women as well. And as you can see, the thing that I want to point out is the age and seeing how the older the people got, the, the more the percentage of usage dropped, going all the way down to 12 and 10% for computer and internet usage. That is an extreme drop. So they were curious on what was the reason behind this decline. And while asking some of the people that they did have the survey for, the people that they asked basically said that they just did not feel like they needed to use it. They felt like it was either a waste of their time, they'd rather have more face-to-face -face communication, or they did not want to spend the money to purchase the devices. So there's a clear gap that has been drawn now and is very visible. So how can this be fixed specifically within the workplace since age, there's a large age diversity in most offices? Well, human resource management believes that they can be the issue to this. The Society of Human Resource Management states that they can educate the employees and that'll be their job. And how will they do this? Well, one of the ideas is, is a cheap way, and that is providing overtime incentives for the younger employees to, cheat, to teach the older ones so they can be more technologically advanced. Along with that, they're going to try to push for more colleague interaction, specifically between the older and younger employees, so that they can potentially communicate technology when having just a normal conversation. Also regarding this topic of the technology gap, I had a sit-down interview with Beth Albrecht. She's a senior purchasing manager at ZF Group and has been working at this company for over 25 years. She has also been in this upper level management position for 10 years. And the two takeaways that we had from our great interview that we had was that older employees must prepare to adapt, meaning that they have to be ready for the new and upcoming technologies that come into their workplace. They must also always stay open-minded so that when it comes to learning new ideas and such that they are prepared to take them in. Finally, they must always want to learn. And that is, some, that is a, a factor that some of the best leaders have, is that they are always striving to learn more. And learning technology can be extremely beneficial to them and their company. Also, the younger employees must be patient and be respectful, knowing that these older employees have had the same types of daily routines and use the same types of technologies and previous artifacts that have helped them succeed for decades. And it has come with great success using them. But they must also be helpful and understanding, knowing that these employees, older employees may take longer to learn and they can be the ones that help them. After our great interview, she pointed me towards a book that could be extremely beneficial, and so I read it. This book is known as A Tribe of Mentors by Timothy Ferris. And in this book, I had three, uh, three takebacks. The first one being, always stay open to new ideas. He mentioned that by staying open to new ideas, whether you're young or old, could make you a better person no matter what. Second, be prepared for change. It is something that we see in the world, especially nowadays. And being open to it and being prepared for it will make you a better person to work, for, work with. And finally, respect the older colleagues. 
And I, what I really liked is that he got into the discussion with how their work is actually the foundation of the company. Because everything they put in before you joined the company, and before these younger, more tech-savvy employees came in, was, is what makes the company as good as it is. So you have, you have to respect that, because they've put in a lot of hard hours and time making this company as good as it is. So, in conclusion of everything that I found within my research, I found that companies must push for HR education because those are the people that can lead the employees down the right path. Second, older employees must stay open to new ideas since there are new ideas and new technologies flowing in the doors every day. Also, younger employees must be respectful specifically to those older employees for all the hard work they have done. And finally, this is something that I came up with myself, is do not fix something that is not broke. And what I mean by this is, is we've seen employees stay within companies for 30 to 40 years. And with that being said, what they have done is extremely beneficial to that company and very successful. So if their routines and habits have been really beneficial, then why change it? I thank you for your time and we accept any questions at this moment. How do you think um, a high amount of internet usage will affect our society, positive or negative? <clears throat> Well, I believe that within the workplace it can be extremely beneficial, whether that being giving companies a better projection on how to make ends meet or even make profit, but there can also be some drawbacks specifically outside of business and more in the society realm because it could lead to perhaps children seeing things that they shouldn't and also creating negative thoughts and ideas for kids that may not be capable of understanding them yet. Yes? Um, do you think it could cause conflict in the work, like in the workplace if the younger employees are teaching the older ones? <clears throat> well, as long as there is a set guideline that could be made by human resources, I don't think there will be. But I would say if there isn't a set guideline, it could draw issues because it could lead to miseducation and a failure of teaching what is correct and could actually cost time and money for the company. So it's really based off of if there's guidelines that are made by human resources. How do you think with the new technology of 3D printing, like? With engineering and everything, like, like it's really difficult to learn. So, how do you think older employees will be able to like embrace that without just using like hand tools and stuff? Well, I personally believe that what can be done with three uh, D printing, because it is actually a very hard and technological, uh, it's a new technological, but it's gonna be hard to learn. Uh, I think it can be categorized similar to CAD, where it's more specialized for people. Um, it can be simple, simplified, so that almost anyone can use it. But if, for companies that are really trying to make the best use of it, such as companies that are trying to make uh, human parts and stuff like that, uh, you'd want someone who can really master it, similar to how people master CAD for the automotive industry. And so I believe that'll be the best way to educate them, uh, which would probably involve more than just some guidelines that a, say, a younger employee can teach, but rather like an actual uh, person from a company coming and educating the staff on how to properly use it. Is there any more questions that you guys have to ask, or is that, will that be it? All right, thank you very much again for your time, and I hope you guys have a good one.